We are less than one day out from Election Day, which means there's time for a one last strategy session. Joining us now is Republican strategist and former campaign manager for Ted Cruz's presidential bid, Jeff Rowe, who comes to us from Kansas City, Missouri. And out in Raleigh, North Carolina, we have a Clinton supporter and president of Emily's List, Stephanie Shriok. Guys, great to see you both. Uh, you're both sitting in uh, out there in America land. Um, give us a sense from where you sit, starting with you, Stephanie, um, where you see the race in these closing hours. Well, I couldn't be more pleased about where we are. I mean, first off, we've had 41 million Americans already vote in this election. We're seeing historic Hispanic turnout in places like Florida and Nevada, where, of course, Emily's List has a significant Senate race with Catherine Cortez Masto. Uh, and even in North Carolina, where I was uh, canvassing today in Wilson, and I cannot believe how many doors I went to. And they're like, we voted on Saturday. We had a huge turnout of African American voters on Saturday, and those that couldn't just couldn't stay in line long enough, they know that they're committing to getting there at 6.30 tomorrow morning. It's about execution turnout, and it's happening, and I'm really pleased where we are. Jeff, tell me, uh, I just got, I'm gonna ask you just to cut to the chase, and then we'll drill down a little bit further, but um, tomorrow, um, on the basis of all the data that you currently have in your big, giant brain, who's gonna be the next president of the United States, and are Democrats gonna take the Senate? I think uh, Hillary has a, a small, steady lead, but Trump is making a run these last, you know, these last 168 hours this week. And I think there, we're in a rain delay with the Comey letter yesterday, and he's making a frantic finish to try and close. But I think when the when the when it drops tomorrow, that it is all going to be about what kind of campaign did they execute? When you're in a margin of error race. It's about the ground game. It's about the analytics. And what we've said all along is that he didn't have that ground game capacity. On the other side, he had populist anger. So what's going to win out, the ground game or the populist anger? I'd hate to pick which one of those is going to win, but it's clear he's got some ground to make up. Uh, in the Senate, I think we're going to hold the Senate. And I think it's going to be very close. You have seven races that are within the margin of error. But at the same time, as with the presidential, you have several, state, uh, several senators that have had a small, narrow, consistent advantage. And so I think we hold on. Jeff, uh, we've been saying, looking at all the data, it would appear that Hillary Clinton uh, has what she's had almost the entire cycle, which is a clear and obvious advantage with many more paths to 270 and the ability to stop Donald Trump. So let me ask you this. If Donald Trump loses, how do you think the Republican Party at large will re 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 react on Wednesday to a president-elect Hillary Clinton? Well, well it will be the, the uh, six out of the last seven campaigns that we would have lost the popular vote. And we've got to figure out, we've got to take some stock in that, understand some weaknesses in that. But and it also Jeff, depends sorry, how I'm, we lose. Jeff, Jeff, I mean, Jeff we, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm asking, I'm asking not yes. the structural question you're answering, which is also interesting. I'm asking more in an emotional and visceral way. How do you think Republicans will react on Wednesday itself immediately to the news that Hillary Clinton's going to be president if she wins? Well, I can tell you I'm helping a lot of candidates write their statements right now. And I think everything, we can't say this, I think I can maybe articulate it by it sucks and it's terrible. And we squandered a great opportunity to, to defeat a, a candidate that had very big structural problems. And it'll be extre extremely disappointing. Stephanie, same question for you. How do you think your party will react if Wednesday Donald Trump is president-elect emotionally and, and viscerally in the moment? Well, of course, we have to wait until all those votes are uh, cast and counted. Uh, but. I think that, I mean, one, I'm going to be very surprised if uh, that's in fact the case because of where we are in this structural moment. But I think for, for women voters and women across this country, uh, it's going to be a hard pill to swallow. And uh, I think there's going to have to be a lot of conversation about how we move forward um, in our politics. But like I said, I think women voters are going to decide this election. I've said that this entire election. Uh, I'm seeing really, really good energy uh, from women across this country who are, who are excited, I mean, honestly, excited about voting for Hillary Clinton. They believe in her. They want to see, they want to see her as president. They believe in her leadership. And I think there's also a lot of pent up emotion to want to celebrate a potential breaking of the glass ceiling if we do what we're supposed to do tomorrow. And I can't tell you how many women I've looked at of all ages whose, 
who, who are holding back tears of joy in fear that we might lose this moment, but who want to embrace it. And so I think, I think that's something that's getting overlooked. I think there's really a lot of folks that are very excited about voting tomorrow. Jeff, you're a, a super, as I said before, a super smart strategist and one who's more data oriented than is almost anybody I know in the Republican Party. You know, one of the things that we do spend a lot of time on in, in our political conversation is polls. It seems to me as we, as we get closer and closer to Election Day, the smartest strategists I know are focused more and more not on polls, but on actual vote, the early vote that's come through in a lot of states. So looking at just early vote right now, it's kind of a confusing picture. Just bring some clarity for us on that question. What is the early vote telling us about what's going to happen tomorrow? Well, it is hard because the early vote goes up cycle after cycle, and this cycle is the biggest jump we've seen yet. But I think a couple narratives have taken hold. One is that African Americans are depressed in most parts of the country, and two is that Hispanics are, are, are whipped up in certain parts of the country. So I think that's why you've seen the map change a little bit from the southern states with more Hispanic influence have come on the line for Hillary. And she felt, you know, for a while she could win Arizona and maybe Georgia, maybe Texas. They feel, I know, more confident about Florida. But the further north you go where the, there's less Hispanic influence and where there's more African-American influence, those are the states now that Trump believes he has in play. They feel better about North Carolina. They feel much better about Michigan, obviously, and Ohio and New Hampshire. So as you see that for every point that the Democrats perform under the 2012 number is a point that they have to make up in a big way with Hispanics, and it seems like they might be doing that. That's why I think you've seen this frantic, almost like, oh, wait, we have to get to 270, not 250. Let's go find some other states to put in play. It's been that kind of plane ride for, for all of us the last 48 hours, and I think it's because the change in demographics of the Clinton campaign underperformed with, with African Americans and overperforming with Hispanics. That's why I think you've seen the math change, and that's what the early vote has, has been instructed to us so far.